combine that with people like Arno that actually care about the platform and know how to yeah. the emulators and then... So you guys are already millionaires from this, right? Oh, sure. <laughs> people take. <laughs> One million dollars. <laughs> you ever watch that show Silicon Valley? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like every it's new app hilarious. idea, you know, it's just it's like so crazy how this stuff goes on. That color bar logo looks familiar. Does it? Yeah, so I designed that. <laughs> Is that something that was on the Coco? Yeah. Yeah, so when I was looking like, for a logo for this thing, I was like, what should I use, what should I use? So I looked around, you know, TRS80 stuff, and I was like, what's up, Colin? I saw yeah, so the Coco logo, I'm like, is that a sign of things to that? Yeah, that's part of that. <laughs> but we were just discussing it earlier. I guess if there is, if there is a, an emulator or anything available for it. That's just work. There are, there are. You don't work out your head. What are we doing for lunch? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that would mean the, the, the thing opens up at 4, right? So maybe after the option, you can see it. I mean, just a break, so that thing is getting just storing stuff, or to oh. support games to connect it to us. Yeah, that's how people go back. No, I'll sort of play out the basically. Is that the link place for now? Yeah, this is just the best thing. Yeah, it's like, 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 I think it yeah, was some yeah. Rules oh, yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, I should have with it either. Yeah, yeah we're back with a nice if it was like a lunch. Yeah, I got breaks around in the yeah. 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 back to what I said. Some kind of commentary. Yeah. Yeah, that was my dinner last night. It was my late night snack. Before bed snack. I was just kidding. We got in around midnight that we were unloading and setting up our tables. Well, we got at least two million people on the live stream. <laughs> 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 really well, Hi guys, thanks for coming to our presentation. Uh, my name is Alan Pewter, and this is my buddy and co-conspirator Sasha Heberling. And um, you can see from the title that we have uh, two topics uh, we want to talk about today that are, of course, uh, connected and linked to, it, to one another. Um, first of all. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, our Android-based uh, emulator for the TRS-80. And then the highlight will be uh, an app store, a retro app store, that uh, makes it easy to download and install these retro apps. Um, we have a few more things on the agenda, so we'll talk a bit about uh, copyright, obviously, which is uh, an important topic uh, when you want to do your own app store. and. Um, then uh, there's one more aspect I want to talk about because I know you guys are all interested in hardware, so and we are software guys, right? So uh, uh, the question then is, how do you uh, possibly can make this accessible on, on a real TRS-80? So I have some thoughts on how you might do that, uh, leveraging an Arduino, but basically that's going to be the outline for the talk. Now we are a small audience here, so uh, feel free to just shoot questions um, as I go here. So I wanted to talk, I want to begin this presentation by, by a, a personal story. I mean, you can probably tell I'm from around here. So I grew up in Germany. Uh, the TRS-80 was my first computer. And um, I remember the first time I saw a big five game. Up to that point, I had only written in basic. And I was just like amazed by the speed that, that I saw unfolding in these big five games. 
and had to figure out how they did, they did do that. So then I learned the 80 and I moved my own. Uh, um, only one arcade game, and you can tell that it was heavily inspired by Big Five. Uh, they also had some games, they had this little ticker tape going around. And the only reason why I wanted to bring this particular thing up, if you look at the very bottom of that, uh, of that screenshot, you see those numbers 5206. That happens to be the zip code of my hometown where I grew up. And um, uh, what I wanted to just mention is also to show the passage of time. That was before the war came down. So nowadays Germany has a five-digit zip code. You know? So when I, after I tried to res manage to resurrect my old game, saw this four-digit zip code, I had kind of a blast of the past kind of thing, you know, remember, reminding me, oh my god, yes, we used to have these four zip codes in West Germany, you know, which of course is also now today in federal country of Germany. So anyway, so let's move on to the next slide. And um, there are a whole bunch of emulators, so uh, we are by far known, the, uh, not, not the only ones, and I'm sure you have heard of, of most of these emulators, they are all quite popular. Uh, um, there is one that is uh, the first one here on the slide, the, the TRS-32, um, developed by Matthew Reed. Uh, Share Air, a very fine emulator that does a very fine job. Um, I believe it only runs on Windows, so that's maybe one little limitation on, on that um, emulator. Uh, there is another system called MESS, the Multi Emulator Super System. That, um, that host is an umbrella for a whole bunch of different emulators. So they, they have not only TRS-80, they also have uh, Commodore C64, all these different retro uh, vintage platforms. Um, there is the TRS Emo, uh, which is interesting because it's completely written in JavaScript. So you don't need any download, you don't need any uh, uh, plugins. You can just take a regular browser, you surf this web page. Uh, that I have linked here on, on the slide, and then you can actually run an old TRS-80. It's a little bit limited, so they focus on keyboard, screen, and the Z8 emulation, so they don't have hard disk, you know, floppy disk, and, and, and such things. But it's still an amazing uh, uh, display of how technology has advanced, and you can nowadays run the TRS-80 in JavaScript inside a browser. Um, on the bottom, Sharp 80, uh, that's one of the latest uh, uh, TRS-80 emulators and is also maybe a testament of this retro movement that people even nowadays are uh, in this business of, of spending their spare time on writing emulators. Um, this one is written in C-sharp, uh, hosted on, on GitHub, um, I believe it's open source, so definitely worth to check out. So there are two emulators I want to, uh, uh, to uh, mm -hmm. mention because they uh, have relevance for our Android version. The first one is XTRS, uh, developed by Tim Mann. Uh, it was done in the, uh, in the 90s, I believe. Um, and it's basically, uh, well, about, I, I did a, a grab on it, uh, 24,000 lines of, of uh, C code. And that is a fairly comprehensive TRS-80 emulator. So it can not only emulate keyboards and, and uh, keyboard and the uh, screen, but also does a very fine job on cassette sound, uh, floppy disk, hard disk. Um, it's called XTRS because uh, Tim Mann implemented an X Windows uh, user interface for it. So we needed X Windows. It only ran on Unix systems. Then a few years later, uh, a guy uh, by the name of Mark Raby came along and uh, he took XTRS and then basically added um, a different UI layer over it uh, called SDL. And um, SDL gives this nice uh, feature of making it portable. So um, SDL and TRS now runs on, on all different kind of platforms, so Windows, Mac, and, and Linux. Um, and it, it, uh, it added some more features to it, so I did also a little line number code here. So that's about like 40, uh, 47,000 lines of, of source code. So let's fast forward then to uh, to our emulator uh, for the um, uh, for Android. Now, um, basically, what what our emulator is, it's just a UI layer over SDL TRS. So there is so much knowledge that, that uh, uh, these guys who wrote the emulators put into their products, into their into their code that I did not want to start from scratch. You know, I have a good working knowledge of the TRS-80, but 
all the details that um, you will find in, in these emulators, I, I, I don't know that much. So what I basically did is I took the source code of SDL TRS and tried to use it as much as is for the Android version. Um, how I did that, I have some technical slides where I kind of walk you through that. Uh, but basically the features uh, um, are almost identical to what you uh, um, know from SDL TRS. Uh, there are a few more little things that we added to it that are, that are specific to Android. So for example, we have Chromecast support. So if you have a Chromecast, you can screen share your Android screen with your big TV. Um, it's a very nice feeling uh, when you sit here from a keyboard and have like, your 55 inch TV in front of you. Um, and then uh, we also have different keyboard systems. So we have something called the tilt interface. You know, smartphones have an accelerometer. So for games, you can basically just tilt the game and then make the ship go left and right by just tilting the phone. Yeah. Um, there is a little uh, tutorial system. So this is a jump start view if you're a little bit rusty on your TRS-80 uh, commands and, and basic commands. So anyway, so it's come a long way. The first public release was in 2013, and by that time I already spent a good couple of years on tinkering with it. Um, the store listing is on the bottom here, and um, you know, who has an Android phone here in the audience? A bunch of people, okay. Um, the next slide, let's do the, uh, this is a live demo. And uh, so, so in, in real life, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a professor, I'm, I'm teaching, and I tell my students, never ever do live demos. And bound <laughs> <laughs> to badly uh, backfire on you, but um, I don't listen to my own advice, so it's, I can make this work here. I'm <laughs> sad, <laughs> Okay, so I'm having a, a tablet here, that's the Nexus 9. And uh, just open the Google Play Store, you uh, just search for TRS-80. And then uh, the first hit you get here is then our emulator. Uh, you just hit the install button here. And uh, see if the Wi-Fi is holding up here. While it's installing, um, I had a conversation earlier with the gentleman um, who's doing the video here about the, the ROMs. And obviously, you need uh, the old ROMs to run an emulator. And um, for copyright reasons, we have not included the ROMs in our product, in, in this downloadable uh, Android application. Um, so when you first launch the app, what happens is first you have to grant permission, that's the Android permission models, um, to give access to the SD card. So you just say, yes, I allow this. And then we have the setup the systems. And um, you know, if, I don't know if you can read it here. It says, do you want to download the necessary uh, TRS ID ROM images from well-known internet locations? <laughs> so I, I click OK, and then off it goes to the internet. And, uh, and you have your first configuration here, which is basically um, the TRS ID tutorial. When you, uh, when you tap something for the first time, there is a little hint that explains a little bit more on, uh, on what you can do with it. So then just tapping on it, then it will start the emulator. And again, there is a little hint for the first time you launch the emulator. You can see that um, uh, there are a bunch of, of uh, actions you can do. You can pause the emulator, you can reset, rewind the sets, you, know, you can uh, copy and paste from the keyboard and so forth. So if I click on the tutorial, uh, what I basically do here on the bottom, I, uh, uh, I show the command, and by just clicking next, this command will be inserted into the emulation. And there's also a little description on the bottom on what this command does. So first, like the dear colon one, so show the content of the, of the first. Uh, so I'm not typing this right now. This is uh, basically done by the tutorial. And, uh, then launch basic, and type in your hello world. <coughs> And run it, and so forth. And as like a sequence of several steps, I'm going to stop this here right now. Um, so what you see on the bottom now is the soft keyboard um, that is mimicked after the original layout. 
So there is on the bottom left a little icon where you can switch the uh, keyboard type. So that's the uh, written layout on smaller screens. You can also um, uh, uh, pick um, a compact layout. There is a joystick control. So if you buy one of these cheap uh, game controllers, Bluetooth game controllers, you can pair it with Android. You can also play the old games with the modern game controller. Um, um, uh, there is a this tilt interface, what they mentioned earlier, where you can just tilt the device, and there is the first question. Uh, can you also pair with a, a Bluetooth keyboard? If you, if yes, you can. You can. And the keystrokes will go. Yes, yes. And Excellent. if you actually, I can show you later, I will not do it right now, but what will happen then is the soft keyboard, the, the will automatically detect that, the soft keyboard will just disappear and you can type it on, on the hard key. Fantastic. Wow. So like what I mentioned earlier with the Chromecast support, it really almost gives you the, the old feeling, you know, except you sitting in the theater and you know, the TV set. So when you turn the uh, um, device landscape, so um, what I decided to do here is to overlay, you can see the, uh, the keyboard is basically superimposed on the screen. Um, I can now type a command here, CMD, let's remember how to exit to uh, operating system, CMD, yes, enter, and back I am, so I type in here. If I hit the back button, then I am back in the main screen. Um, I may, I'm taking advantage of some capabilities that Mark Gravy added to his SDL uh, TRS emulator, namely making the state persistent. So if uh, I'm now back on the main screen, I have a screenshot. If I tap on it again, I basically restore and return exactly where I left off. Now, this notion of this little card here, that what we call a configuration, is basically if you tap on the info button here, it flips around and you can see basically some details. I'm emulating a Model 3 here, I have two discs currently mounted and the original keyboard for landscape and portrait. Uh, what I can do now is I can, um, I can create a new configuration. I can just go to uh, this plus here and then I can, uh, for example, call it something configuration, I can set like I want to have model 3, and um, for this image I prepared a demo image, where is it, From here, so basically you can configure different things, you can configure different keyboards you want to have by default for landscape and portrait, you can select the uh, character color if it's going to have green or white, and there's a little, little gimmicks like that, you go back, And then you have a second, oops, you know, I did something wrong. Model 3, this image. Perfect. And uh, I'm doing something funny here right now. Okay, the, the name I didn't call it. So you can see now you have like, like two of these cards. You can have as many of these cards as you wish. You can then long press and you can reorder them. Uh, when I tap on it, um, it will... I guess you guys remember that. The sound of course is playing now on my tablet here. And you can see that's where I got the inspiration for the, uh, the splash screen of my name. I go back here and you can see again screenshot and, and uh, the state is persistent so you can easily then and go back and, and resume it later if, if you wish. Uh, the icon on the bottom right I will not do right now. You can see the shopping cart icon that is our retro store and Sasha will talk later about that. And that is the big launch we'll announce here today at uh, Tandy Assembly. But um, let's go back to uh, <coughs> the presentation. And let me give you some quick uh, technical details on the implementation. So, as I mentioned, sorry, sorry. <laughs> 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 okay, we have got one more customer. Yeah? <laughs> one more download. <laughs> There's also a mute button on the emulator. <laughs> Okay, so here is the uh, technical architecture on, on how this works, the, the emulator for Android. 
So on the bottom, you have the platform, which is basically Android. They do offer a full POSIX-compliant API. So I, I'm sure all of you guys have some technical background here, so I can, I can do some dirty talk here, right? <laughs> um, so um, uh, Android uh, did their own, they didn't want to use the GNU, so they did their own POSIX implementation called Bionic. But basically, it gives you the same kind of POSIX API that, that you know from, from Unix. And SDL TRS makes use of that API, so for example, opening uh, um, um, disk images. They use fopen, the POSIX API fopen. So that is what basically um, um, we're just leveraging from the Android platform, no change at all. And of course, the images have to be stored on the SD card. Then uh, the lighter color on the top APK, that's, that's the application, it's the Android package. That is basically, APK is the technical term for, for the Android app. And you can see in the bottom left of that, that is the original un, almost unmodified source code of SDL TRS. And uh, um, you, you may know that Android uh, uses Java as the main development language, and there's something called JNI, Java Native Interface, where you can bridge between Java and C code. And that's basically what we do here in order to communicate, uh, make calls into the C code, and also calls outside to the C code. Um, I wanted to um, give you one little detail, um, uh, namely screen updates here. So um, if you remember your Z80, so on the bottom left I have um, three lines of Z80 code. Uh, you will probably quickly then, uh, be able to tell that, that what that will do is it will poke fifth, uh, uh, four one, accessible 4.1 into address uh, 3C00, which happens to be the top left corner of text mode screen on the TRS-80. So when you exit this, this program, it will do a capital A in the top left corner of the screen. A little bit small, but it's inside that little red circle there. Now when the uh, when an emulator um, goes to this little um, machine code there, when you emulate basically a running TRS-80, then at some point uh, the emulator, and this is some uh, code snippet out of SDL TRS, it will call a function called mem underscore write. So basically the emulator has detected that you're doing a, a load instruction where you're loading something to memory. And you're being given uh, the address and the value to be written. And then there's an if statement to check, well, is the address range, is the address within the range of the screen? And if yes, then we have to update the screen. Now that is where I have to then insert some, some little changes and then make an up call into uh, the Java code to tell then the Android layer to then render, do an update. And um, which is, next slide, which is more complicated than you might think. See, because look on the left side. So you have something executing um, uh, in, within SDL TRS. And once in a while, whatever you run, um, makes a modification to the screen, at which point I do an up call. Now, from my perspective, the emulation is a black box. Right? I cannot predict how often these screen updates will come. If you have a game like, like Cosmic Fighter, it will do many, many updates. But if you have um, something like, like uh, just interactive input on the keyboard, you will have only very few updates. So if you try to update the screen every time the emulation writes in a new character into your screen, it will overrun the Android system. It will be too slow. So actually what I had to do is I had to be a little bit more mindful of that. And now we have different uh, threads that uh, take care of different parts of the emulation. So there's one thread is the CPU thread. That's the Z80 CPU thread that basically goes with the emulation. But then there's a second thread we call the render thread. And that is uh, responsible for the screen updates. So what we do is that whenever we notice that uh, something is happening on the screen, we inform the Java layer, OK, update your screen. If new updates happen in between, they're being buffered and then batched together, and then in one batch we give up the Java layer. So with that, we can get some some good results on on uh, any times uh, any types of uh, TRS80 apps, no matter if they do fast or slow screen updates. Well, that's the uh, the technical details on the Android emulator, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm over now. Yeah, and now we hand over to Sasha, who then will talk about the uh, App Store. Sure. Thanks, Arno. Um, 
Yeah, so as Arno said, this, this emulator has already been on the Play Store since 2013 and, um, you know, making good progress. And I think it was about a year ago, Arno, was that when we kind of like started thinking about like just a better way of, of you know, getting all, all these old games and apps, um, make them available more easily. I mean, as you saw, you can basically create your own configurations in the emulator, but it can be a bit tedious, right? And especially, you know, if, if you just quickly want to get something going, we, we thought, well, there should be an easier way to get this going, right? And since real software guys were like, well, how can we solve this with software, right? What can we do? And if you take a look at the iOS platform or the Android platform, I mean, you're used to having app stores, right? You want something, you just go there, you install it, as you demonstrate, right? This, this just works, right? Just flawless, right? It's not effort involved. And we're thinking, well, we would like to have something like that, right? Um, there are so many archives, as you can see here as well, that have old, old images of apps, of games. Um, they're all available, but to make them actually work very quickly, especially on your Android and your mobile phone, um, that takes some amount of effort to actually get that going. So, so we're thinking, okay, how can we make it as effortless as, as possible for you to just install these, uh, these retro apps? just as, as if you would install any modern app on your, on your smartphone. Um, so that's basically where the idea of this retro store was born. Some people might actually recognize the, the logo a little bit, might be familiar. <laughs> um, so, and as you can see, so as the first platform, so first we were thinking, well, we want to have this working for the TRS emulator that you just saw, right? But then we're thinking, well, if it works for that, we can, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to make this work on pretty much any platform there is. Uh, and that's basically one of the goals. At the moment, we only support this one emulator, but you know we're very curious about like other emulators, other systems, even hardware systems that are around, uh, to see whether we can implement or integrate with them if there's any interest. Um, also, I'll, I'll have some links later. All of this stuff is open source, right? So if you decide you want to run it on your own, you want to make changes, all of this stuff is open um, to download. And I think the next one. So then here. We to stick with the theme, let's do a little let's do a little live demo here. Um, because no risk of fun. <laughs> so one of the things that we want to show is so first of all, so that's the website, that's the website of the TRS80, uh, sorry, of the retro store. Um, as you can see, you know, uh, we have a bit of information about you know where you can find the code, where you can find the Android emulator. Uh, there's a Google Plus community that you can join if you want to stay in contact with us, let us know what's happening. Um, if you go here, um, on this little apps icon up here, you can actually see all the apps that are currently already in the store. Um, these are mostly curated by Honor right now, um, but that's a good start. So you, can, you can basically see a list of all of these here. Um, but, so the real magic, we'll switch that on at some point, is to basically open this up. If you have an image that you want to distribute, if you're allowed to distribute, Right? Uh, then we'll give you the opportunity to upload these things to the store. Um, and these changes will immediately propagate down to the app that you just saw. And just again, no risk of fun, let's just try to upload one right now uh, and see how quickly that happens. Um, oh, yeah, let's show the client first so you can actually see that the app that I'm going to upload is not actually already in there. Um, all right. Let's... All right. Um, well, let's go ahead. So, yeah, let's, so as you saw earlier, already there's this little shopping cart in the bottom right, um, and there it loads. So that's basically the same list that you see in the background of the website, but here is <coughs> inside the emulator. Um, you can see like the list of all the different apps uh, that are currently in there, and maybe we just choose one. Uh, one of those you see like again, you see the description and some information that we have, and then you can install it at the bottom here. Uh, so I'm just going ahead and do that right now. Uh, yes, install it. Um, and let's go back to where we were at the beginning where you saw all these configurations. And what has happened now is we automatically created this configuration for you. You didn't have to do it manually, you didn't have to download separate images, create the configuration, and now we should be able to actually run it. So if we go in here, there you go. Um, it was downloaded, installed, and you can run it within just a couple of seconds. Uh, just as easy as if it would be with like the Apple Store or the Play Store. Uh, pretty much the same one. Um, all right, let, let's, let's, let's say you know, I have another image that I want to upload to the store, and let's see how long it takes to actually have it on the device. Um, so let me go in. So this is like the, the public facing site, but then there's like a little uh, like a back end to it as well. And you can see here are all the apps 
So here you would see all the apps that you have in the retro store, and you can manage them all. Um, and we can basically go in here now. We can say, okay, let's let's add a new one. Um, and I've prepared something here. <laughs> so let me just go ahead. I don't have to do all the details here. But all right. So as you can see, you know we have, of course, the name. Uh, you can have a version, you know, especially, I mean, for old apps that don't change anymore, you probably have, like, just one version. But let's say there's actually one that's actively being developed, uh, you know, you might want to change that so you can automatically update it in your emulator later. Uh, so that's all pretty default. Uh, let's put in the description that I just copy and pasted. Um, the release year, which I believe, oh, let's just put it in one. Uh, Author-wise, so, you know, obviously, you might not actually be the author of this, but you might have gotten permission to upload it from the author. So we already have a list of, of authors, basically all the authors that are already in the system right now. Um, but you know, if if that author is not already in there, then of course you can just go ahead and add it, and then it will be available later as well. Um, so we'll do that. We'll say. Uh, <laughs> still works. Still works. <laughs> still works. And then of course, so and so far that has all been very you know common attributes like the title and description. But now, since this is a TRS-80 application, you know I can I can choose specific things to the TRS-80. In this case, the model, which will be model three. So I save these changes, um, and then let's take a look. Here it is. And now, of course, I have to add the disk images, right? Um, so as you can see here again, this is like the TRS-80 specific <coughs> area. You can add up to the disk images, cassette image, and then what we call the command image, which basically helps you auto run. Um, a specific disk image that you've mounted in the emulator, so you don't have to type the actual load command, but we'll provide it for you. Um, so I'm just going ahead and upload it right here. So as you can see, I can choose a file, of course. Where is it again? <laughs> Let's just browse it quickly. Um, and of course, you can imagine if this would not be a TRS-80 app, but something else, then you would have maybe some other options here to upload. It's just images too. And I'll go over this a little bit later, but so the fact that this works live now, it will be available right away in the app. So it's pretty fast. Uh, we still have a lot of caching and so on in the back end that I can show you a little bit later as well, if that's of any interest. But yeah, we tried to make it very fast um, so that you know you don't have to wait so long. It was actually interesting because these disk images, they're all fairly small. So at some point we were thinking, oh, we can actually just try to them as text because they're like so small. Um, but then again, like in the interest of actually scaling these to different platforms, um, you know, we decided to scale it properly. And then, so let's see, we have command image as well, right? Oh, we can see this. Oh, because it's only. Oh, all right. And then, of course, screenshots, right? Some screenshots that we just saw. So again, we basically allow you to, to add a bunch of these here. So let's start with the first one here. You can see it right away. The second one. Just to be complete here, and then so there's like a, there's like one thing, one implicit thing, and that is uh, the first screenshot in this list will be the one that is basically the app icon that will show in the list. So let's just say I want to use this nice, colorful one. So I basically just move this one up right down here, um, and there it is. So that's basically it. And let's switch back to the emulator. So let's hit the store button again. If everything went well, you should see it's the last part down this list. There it is. So that's why I just added. You can see it here right away. Let's try to install and run it. <laughs> Still works. <laughs> All right, let's go back. There is the configuration, and there it is. And there it is running. I just uploaded it, and now it's on the device. And that's how quick that can go. So again, we're trying to make it easy for like the user, but also like if you have something that you want to upload, uh, very streamlined, very easy, no fuss um, way of uploading these images. Uh, right, so let's get a little bit more into the technical details of how this all <coughs> works. So I mean, I don't want to bore you with all the details here, but um, basically, what you what you just saw, like wh wh where's all this stuff stored? So it's stored in uh, the Google Cloud in something called the App Engine, which has been around for like 10 years or so by now. Um, so there's some logic there that basically stores all the app data that you just saw, like the descriptions, the versions, the authors, and so on. 
and also the disk images uh, that you saw. So there's a separate store for that. Uh, we heavily cache that, you know, to make sure everything's very efficient. Uh, there's the actual code that does, that basically does everything. Um, you saw the public website that's there, the app and interface that I just demonstrated to you as well. But then, more importantly, there's the API part, right? And the API is what interfaces with apps, with devices, um, like like the emulator that, that you just saw. And then across the internet, we can distribute um, the data. And the API is open. Yes. So is What's that upload you did? Is that now a publicly available thing? Yes, that's publicly available. Okay. Yeah. It, it, is there an interface to do that? Maybe I have code that I'm working on, or a license yeah. something that I bought that uh -huh. that I can use without necessarily making it public. Um, so not right now, but so I mean, one reason why we present this here as well. So this is like version 1.0, 0.1 yeah. maybe. I, I guess I, I know. I'm glad. So, so, so input like that is really great, right? Because we want to make that for other people, right, available, and we want to see like what what do people need. Um, also, despite its name, Retro Store, we really don't have any payment methods or anything in there. So all of this right now is free to use, and like, we don't really plan that. But again, like it really depends on what features people want. Um, and I think things like that would be easy to add, right? If you wanted to, to distribute to like a limited amount of people, features like that are definitely doable. But right well, now, well, the place for licensing is, is still an issue. Yeah, yeah. I want to upload <coughs> a copy without making it publicly available. Absolutely. We're actually talking about licensing at the very end, but that's a very good point, yeah. Is it currently only limited to Android? Um, so, yeah, so the retro store itself, um, it can be used anywhere, right? So the yeah. API itself is open. I'll go into the details about how it works. But the emulator that you just saw, that one I was just curious about. You go to iOS, yeah. Apple's really strict about. Yeah, I, exactly. So I don't know. I don't know exactly the rules in the Apple universe at the moment, yeah. since, since I'm only roaming Android. So that might not be possible. I'm a mobile app developer. By trade. So there you go. It's a pain in the neck. I yeah. think yeah. it kind of relaxed the restrictions a bit. Because uh, I remember years ago there was a Commodore emulator that they wouldn't run. Yeah. Like, yeah. Run. Because well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, if you download something, they still don't allow it. You can do emulation and allow virtual machines by now on in iOS apps, but not with that download code from the internet. But I'm just saying, like, to get something approved and put up there, so like, you just uploaded that image. Um, yeah. I'm not so sure. Do you have yeah, we can hide a sort of Yeah, that's why I'm right. saying, okay. Have worried about it, but obviously it couldn't be on the app. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 And, and again, like, the, the register itself, um, you know, that you could, if you had something and you actually managed to get that uploaded to, to, the, to the Apple App Store, right, you could use that. Uh, so all I'm saying is, I guess, that the Retro Store API itself, that thing is platform independent, right? right. So you can it anywhere. I, I wasn't sure, like, if uh, the Retro Store was built into what you guys have already uploaded. So then what you're uploading, you're just uploading to the right. that's on your device. Correct, correct, yeah. So, so the, the API itself, so getting the data from the cloud onto the uh, TRS-80 emulator in this case, or any other client, um, is done using this thing called protocol buffers. And I, I don't expect anybody here has ever heard of that, maybe. But it's basically a very tight binary format. You describe it in this binary, uh, sorry, you describe the, the, the data format in this protocol buffer language, like this one here. So for example, for the app, we have an ID, we have a name, version, description, all these things, right? Uh, for the TRS-80, we also say what the model is. Uh, but then, of course, more importantly, for the actual disk images, you know, we basically, we have these API requests, and one of them is like, hey, I want the media images for this particular app, like Stellar Escort that you just saw. And what you get back is a list of these media images, and they have the actual data, obviously, right? That's what you need. You also get the file name, right? Because you need to know what kind of format it is. In this case, they were DSK images. So that's something you need to know. And then some other metadata, like when it was uploaded, potentially some description for these, um, and so on. And of course, for the TRS-80 in particular, we need to know, is that a disk, is it a set image, what is it, right? Um, and that's a nice way of formatting the actual information we're transmitting without binding it to a particular language like Java or C or C++, uh, because that is something where now the protocol buffer compiler comes in, uh, where we take these files that you just saw, they're called the proto files, and then you can generate Java, C++, even C versions are available, where you then get these, these really nice type classes or files that then let you parse that data that comes across the wire. Again, the data is very densely packed. Um, and you can then very efficiently just read the data in any language. And this way you can basically wrap API around this in almost any language there is. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good question. I don't actually know. Maybe. Maybe there should be one. <laughs> I know that there's definitely a C version of it, although it's not officially supported by the project, but I think there are at least four open source C versions of it. Um, and then basically once we generated, in this case, for example, the Java API, it's actually very easy. So this is code that's basically running in the emulator right now. And you know, you basically say, okay, get me, get me an instance of the client, uh, get me a list of all the apps, and then basically you get the name, description, all the stuff in here. So that's basically how that would work. Um, again, this is like the end to end, right? There's a store over the internet, you load the data to the client, um, we basically then put the disk images on the SD card or the internal memory of the Android phone, um, and then the emulator can read it from there. And that's what you just saw in life. Um, again, as I said, all this stuff is open source, the emulator, including the retro store itself. So if, if at some point you say, oh, I want to host my own retro store. So one thing, for example, to answer the first question we had is, we could actually just go ahead, download the source code for the retro store, and create your own instance of it, and then not make that public view. Right? So that's totally something you can do. Um, because, again, everything is open source, um, end to end, completely. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so there, there are two more quick things um, we want to cover before wrapping up here. One is uh, to give you hardware guys maybe an idea on how you would port then this retro app store to a, to a real TRS maybe hardware. Um, and um, the second topic will be copyright. So let me first start out by talking, you know, what, what, how could you possibly um, make it uh, work that you have a native retro store client? So something that runs on an old TRS-80 machine, akin to Pete's uh, uh, wiki and, and, and uh, Dropbox client. And um, the problem is that the, the protocol that you uh, have to talk to the backend is usually a little bit too heavyweight for TRS-80 with limited memory. So you need to have some ways of some bridge, some proxy that then relays between the backend, in our case the Metro store, and then the native application written in Z80 code. And um, basically I wanted to, to pitch a new idea to you guys and see and maybe tonight over a beer we can talk about it in more detail. But what I'm proposing is to use an Arduino as this kind of uh, bridge from the hardware and software perspective. Um, because you can solve a bunch of problems with that and they're, they're fairly inexpensive. On the next slide here, um, I have an example that's, that's an Arduino chip that I've been using quite, quite a bit. It's the ESP8266. Uh, and uh, it's about the size of a quarter. So that's like a very blown up image here. But this little puppy here has uh, quite a bit, has 96 kilobytes of, of uh, data, uh, of, of RAM. It has a built-in Wi-Fi chip. It has an 80 megahertz clocked uh, um, 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 RISC CPU. And you can see the price point is $3. Yeah. It has a bunch of uh, different interfaces, the usual thing, uh, SPI, I2C, and UART. So um, what? I'm proposing is how about to take one of these Arduinos and connect it to the serial interface of the TRS-80. <coughs> now, you, you still need to have some code on the TRS-80. How do you get this code on this machine? So far, you had to mail out maybe some floppy disks or some SD cards, but actually what you can do is you can put the native client as data on the Arduino. <coughs> And then to bootstrap the whole thing is you do what you did in the old days. You first write a little basic program on after you turn on the TRS-80. A little basic program in step number one downloads the native C80 code onto the machine, onto the TRS-80, then pokes that into memory, and then you have your, your client. From then on, the native client uses the serial interface to talk to the proxy that is also on the Arduino. And the Arduino, because it has enough memory, it has Wi-Fi, it has SSL, HTTP, everything you want, you want for this purpose, you can then uh, um, talk directly to the same API that Sasha talked about earlier. So basically, just an idea on, on uh, maybe making a very uh, um, um, inexpensive yet elegant solution to, uh, to create this proxy and also have 
um, um, uh, solve this bootstrap problem? How do you get the native client onto uh, the real hardware? Okay, almost wrapping up here. <laughs> you guys know, know uh, this little icon here, I'm sure. Yes, so. so, the apps we have in the App Store are by uh, um, Wayne Westmoreland, who will uh, put all his apps on, on the public domain. So, we, by doing that, we have permission to then uh, upload them. I, I did some curation, I created all the screenshots and the little blurbs and descriptions. Um, so that is perfectly okay. I uh, contacted Bill Hope from Bill, uh, Big Five, and he also gave me permission uh, for most of their apps to be excluded one app. Um, so again, I took then the Big Five games, like Cosmic Fighter I was showing earlier in Stellar Escort, and uh, also curated that. Now I tried to do the same for Dancing Demon here. And I did my best trying to find Leo Christopherson. But his web page is offline as of almost like a year now. And as much internet sleuthing as I did, but I could not get hold of the software. So obviously, he has the copyright of uh, Dancing Demon, so we don't have permission, so we, we cannot upload it to the App Store. Um, but that leads to a bigger problem here. Um, Copyright and uh, what sometimes is referred to as abandonware. You know, so software is abandoned. I guess that's uh, what it's supposed to mean. Uh, they are typically, uh, uh, if you look up some some articles about it, some some papers, they, there are two different distinctions. So there are, is abandonware, where the copyrighted software is unsupported but still owned by a company. And I would put the TRS-80 ROMs in this category. Because there is still a legal successor to uh, Tanby Radish and Corporation, which is the, I can remember the name, General Wireless Operations Inc. They own now whatever is left of, of Tanby Radish. So probably they own the IP of the TRS 80 ROMs. They don't, they don't know that, most likely. And if I went to them, asked them, can I please have permission, they wouldn't even know what I'm talking about. So that's one form of, of abandonment. The other one is corporate software owned by a company no longer a business. And Big Five is a good example. Right? So Big Five used to be a big company back in the, uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, but uh, they closed down. So um, they still have the copyright. Um, copyright does not expire for a long time here in the US. So in those cases, you need to ask for permission uh, if you want to upload that to, to the uh, to App Store. So the problem with much of, of abandonware is that the, the legal status is just simply unclear. You don't know what, what the situation is, and that's why I talked about Dancing Demon. You know, I don't know what, what uh, happened to Dancing Demon and the near Christopherson. It's, for me, it's been impossible to find out uh, what, uh, um, where he lives and, and uh, if he still has interest in, in Dancing Demon. Um, so, so what we do is with RetroStore, so for reading, downloading apps, it's a, it's, a, it's a public API and you don't have to register. However, if you want to upload, you do have to register. Now, um, we are just, we're just a platform, so you know, we cannot like, check everything that people are doing. So there is a feedback link where you can, if, if you are a, a legal copyright holder, where you can then basically then, then say, well, I'm a copyright owner of this particular app, please take it offline. So we have, similar to YouTube, a provision where we then can take content offline again. So basically, we're trying to mimic a little bit the, uh, the YouTube model with, um, with the retro store. But maybe the most important thing is on the very bottom, um, <laughs> we are not lawyers. You know, and, and, um, I have some friends who are a little bit more versed in, in this field, and uh, the feedback was, well, talk to a lawyer. And, you know, yeah, we don't have the funds for, for the retro store here, um, and so maybe at some point we need to do that. Well, last slide. Um, well, in short summary, so two main topics we talked about here. Uh, we just talked about emulators in general, and more specifically, our version for Android. 
and the second topic was uh, the retro store. And actually, I see the retro store more than just a convenience thing. I see it also as a preservation effort. And there are so many apps, and again, like look at Dancing Demon, you know, like, like this gets lost. Right? So, so I, I would hope that maybe the retro store can be maybe starting part of a preservation effort of these, of these old apps. Now Outlook, um, Sasha mentioned it um, earlier, maybe expand to different vintage platforms. Uh, you know, at least from a backend perspective, nothing keeps us from doing that. Maybe uh, talk about um, um, a native client. Um, one gentleman asked earlier about a private listing where you can just uh, upload something that is only visible to you or to a closed group. That might be an idea. Pay apps. I mean, there are some people who still develop software today for the TRS-80. I mean. I would imagine most people are just doing it for the fun, but if you were to do it for money, then there might be an idea maybe to have a payment option here. So just like things that uh, could be done in the future. Um, but anyways, um, as I also mentioned earlier here on the bottom, there is a link to uh, the uh, uh, Google Plus community that we created some time ago. So I tried to memorize the URL. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it is linked from the retro store. We should have also put the retro store in your like retro store dot org. Um, that's where also we link to the uh, Google Plus community. So that's where we will see all the announcements, whatever we end up doing in the future. Obviously, for us, um, especially for me, it's just a kind of uh, a fun project, something that I have passion for, and. Um, um, it's not always that I have lots of time for this, so uh, you know, depending on what kind of features you request, it may take some time for them to be implemented, but um, you can certainly make requests. Anyway, so that concludes the presentation. There is our contact information on the bottom. So if you have any questions, any more questions? So on the copyright issue, you are in a really tough spot because you've taken an opt-in approach where there are a lot of other archives that are that are out there that's taken an opt-out approach. So kind of publish everything and some copyright holder is an issue with the bill pull it off of the uh, I think taking an opt-in approach is going to be a really big challenge to build any sort of sizable collection of software. Like you said, because the majority of these developers are not reachable, they passed away, the legal um, status of a lot of software is kind of limbo knowing what's going on there. Quite possible. Quite possible. I mean, wanted to be a little bit more conservative here uh, because these uh, listings that we mentioned earlier, you know, we know that that not everything that's on there should be on there. Um, so maybe it really boils down to talking to a lawyer and trying to find the solution how we can bridge this gap between the need for preserving these retro games and, and uh, having a, a workable model that, that scales. So we just launched today. So let's see what happens in a year from now. You know, if anyone ever uploads something, or we're the only ones to, to do that. Other questions? Yes. What IDEs were you using to build this that someone else wanted to contribute? Um, the Android emulator um, using Android Studio, which is the standard um, Android uh, uh, development IDE. And for the retro store? Well, the retro store, I mean, I use IntelliJ, but you can use, I mean, it's just a standard um, Java application. It's Java based, the retro store backend as well. So, you know, the emulator is the backend of all Java. And we use the Cradle build system and Git as GitHub specifically as the repository. So, so anything that can handle that will be fine. Any last question? Are you done with all the over security? No. <laughs> you see, like, like the funny thing is, I mean, the TRT for me at least was really influential in my own professional career. So I studied computer science and a PhD and then came to America. And I've been living in this country for 20 years now. So oh. I suppose I can uh, say thanks to, uh, to, to uh, TRT for that. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, where are you at? San Francisco. Oh. So still a long trip. <laughs> still a long trip, but I know that. We do not win the prize for the longest uh, trip here. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for coming and um, giving us your attention. Thank you.